Okay, welcome everybody um, to um, the second virtual postgraduate open day for NUI Galway. Um, we are going to talk today about um, the Masters in Clinical Research. Um, uh, so uh, I'll take you through some of the slides that we have here and um, then we'll leave uh, the session open for some questions if you have. So the Masters in Clinical Research is actually um, in its 10th year this year. Uh, so, so far we've had uh, 178 graduates uh, since the beginning of the master's program in 2010. And currently there are 46 registered students on the program this year um, doing either the uh, full-time or part-time master's of the clinical research. Um, this slide just um, illustrates um, the list of our core modules and optional modules that you can take as part of the master's program. And we'll go into detail in a bit more in the next slides on the different modules that are available to you and uh, which uh, the core modules are that you need to complete as part of the master's. Um, and as um, a little bit about the student background that um, kind of tends to take uh, the master's in clinical research, uh, initially it was really intended for um, clinical um, uh, healthcare staff, uh, so doctors, um, nurses that wanted to get um, an insight into what clinical research is, clinical trials. It was for um, potential new investigators. It was for people that are conducting clinical research uh, in terms of knowing how to conduct it uh, properly um, and to be familiar with the regulatory requirements. But over the years now, um, this student background has diversified enormously um, to include um, engineering graduates, biomedical science graduates, um, um, pharmacy graduates, uh, graduates from nursing, project management, uh, research and development, medical device industry, and healthcare education. Um, and this is just because clinical research, um, the field has expanded over the years. Um, it's requiring a lot more um, diversified areas uh, that um, we have more uh, graduate opportunities, which lie in pharmacovigilance, um, project coordination, project management, uh, monitoring of clinical trials. Um, um, a lot of our graduates tend to go into clinical research jobs um, where they then progress to maybe project coordination jobs. Uh, you have research nursing, um, uh, pharmacy. Uh, what we also have is a cohort of people going into data management, uh, quality and regulatory, and also, of course, education. So that's just um, a snapshot of some of the career opportunities that people uh, tend to go into after graduating with the master's in clinical research. Um, and as I said, um, I, I'll take you through um, <clears throat> the number of different um, modules that you need to complete. Um, there are three core modules that everybody has to take as part of the master's program, um, and they're listed on top. They're all 10 credits each, and, and they need to be completed in semester one. Um, and then uh, you have a range of optional uh, modules that you can then uh, complete either in semester one or the majority of them are in semester two. And as part of the master's program, you're also required to complete um, a research um, type of research, which for full-time students has to be a thesis, which is worth 30 credits. And then for um, part-time students, they have the opportunity to, to select between an independent study, which is worth 10 credits, or the thesis. So um, what that just means is that um, they need to take more modules to bring it up to 90 credits. Um, a little bit about uh, requirements for completion. In order to complete um, the master's, you require 90 credits. Um, 30 of which are uh, going to be comprised of your um, core modules, and then uh, 30 for the thesis. So that leaves you with another 30 credits that you need to take um, to fill up that uh, course. Uh, in terms of um, the full-time students, they complete the master's within 12 months. Um, uh, and um, part-time students, uh, they have the option to complete it over uh, two years. Um, and they're just some of the information that we give students when they start. So moving on to semester one, as I said, you need to complete your three core modules in semester one. So it's quite heavy at the top uh, um, going into semester one. So you have your fundamentals of health research and evaluation methods. Uh, you have an, your introduction to biostatistics, and then you have an online module uh, introduction to the ethical and regulatory framework of clinical research. And as part of that online module, you actually get uh, GCP certified as well. 
in semester one, then you have the option to pick another uh, couple of optional modules if you wish to do so, or um, you can choose to take more modules in semester two. And they are just the list of optional uh, modules that are available to you in semester one. Um, yeah, the core module fundamentals of health and research and evaluation mod um, methods is a core module, but it's also giving you a, a, an overview of research methodology, designs and content areas. Uh, it looks at uh, concepts of health, formulation of research questions, how to go about a literature review, looking at the different study designs available to you, um, how to select for study populations. Um, so it gives you a um, preliminary um, but broad understanding of what clinical research is. Uh, the second core module is Introduction to Biostatistics. So it's a basic overview of um, uh, biostatistics. Uh, it allows students to understand concepts of population distribution, sampling, probability, data type, presentation of statistical inf uh, inference, and hypo hypothesis testing. Uh, again, uh, um, uh, it's a basic overview of what biostatistics is. Uh, and you use Minitab and practical um, examples to work your way through that module. Uh, the third and final core module is the introduction to ethical and regulatory frameworks of clinical research. And as I said, that's a, uh, it is an online module, so it's a direct uh, self-delivery. Um, you um, review uh, um, pre-recorded uh, lessons in relation to good clinical practice, uh, GDPR, uh, the principles of research ethics and how to um, carry out regulatory uh, submissions to the ethics uh, board or um, the regulatory authority. And it touches a bit on uh, clinical trial and medical device um, regulations. Um, and then there are a number of core uh, optional modules, which uh, we have economics evaluation in healthcare that's delivered by our economics uh, mm -hmm. colleagues um, in the School of Economics. Um, uh, there is a first in man clinical trial, so it looks really at, predominantly at uh, early phase clinical trials um, and what, what, how they differ from um, the other clinical trials, phase two, three, and four. Um, we also offer a bioethics module, again, that's online, and um, it looks at um, biospecimen research and the ethics surrounding collecting biospecimens such as tissues, blood, saliva for um, research purposes. Um, and then we're moving on to semester two. So you've completed your core modules and maybe one uh, uh, additional optional module or, or not. And here you have uh, a number of optional modules that are available to you to complete um, as you um, move into semester two. Now, just to bear in mind, if you are doing it part time, uh, you have um, the opportunity to take semester one and semester two modules in year two again. So um, it just allows you to spread out the modules over a longer period of time. Um, I'm not going to dwell on too much on the, the content of these. Uh, if anybody wants to get more information, uh, I can send out a course handbook to you um, if you just email us at clinicalresearch at nuigalway.ie. Um, there is an advanced biostatistics module in semester two, um, which um, it goes into more detail of what biostatistics is um, and that allows you to use more um, statistical modeling techniques that are a bit more advanced. So if you enjoyed the first semester, uh, a lot of people tend to take that, but it is a little bit more uh, difficult. Um, observational analytical research met methods, um, as the name suggests, it looks at observational uh, cohort study type research um, and um, those study designs uh, in terms of what, how they are developed and what, what they are all about. And then we have a very popular research methods for randomized controlled trials. This is an online module um, that looks at um, randomized controlled trials and how, how to go about uh, doing them. It, it uses uh, pre-recorded lessons and uh, weekly assignments on discussion boards um, to introduce students to the main elements of clinical trial design, execution and analysis. Another very popular module on our program is the systematic review module. Again, it's an online module um, developed to introduce students um, to how to go about writing a systematic review. And it goes step by step. It starts with the research question, literature review, 
uh, all the key steps that are par uh, part of um, a systematic review uh, protocol. Uh, um, and then you are asked to come up with a research question that you use as part of the module as well. Uh, semester 2 also offers um, another economics module, uh, health systems and policy analysis. If that's something that you're interested in, looking at uh, cost evaluation or uh, reimbursements of um, uh, healthcare systems. Uh, we offer another uh, online module on biobanking, which looks at the advanced clinical application testing. So once you've actually collected your biospecimen, what are your options um, with those specimens? What would you do? What are the downstream analysis methods? So um, that kind of covers uh, different aspects of that in terms of um, looking at facility safety, quality management systems, but also um, uh, application of testing such as looking at protein DNA or RNA in those samples. Uh, we offer a translational medicine module that is delivered by um, the, uh, the staff in the Regenerative Medicine Institute. Uh, this looks at preclinical testing uh, so before we actually go to clinical trials, what's important. So you're looking at probably a cell culture type analysis, toxicology studies, uh, preclinical design, good manufacturing practice. And as you all know, um, the regenerative medicine have uh, great links to our cell culturing facility that um, manufacturers uh, stem cells for different research purposes. So again, the expertise is there. People that are delivering the courses are actually uh, working in that area. So they, they're, they're content expert, experts on that area as well. Uh, we also then have a clinical research administration module, which is very popular with students that uh, know they're going to work in an environment where they're going to be working with, um, let's say, uh, working as a, as a clinical research associate, where they need to be able to coordinate uh, clinical trials um, to support the investigator and that's looking at monitoring and um, the administrative viewpoint of clinical research, the site file documentation uh, and the regulation of clinical trials. So it's, an, uh, it's a key module for anybody who wishes to go in to maybe see themselves working in um, that side of things. A little bit about the independent study. Um, so that's only available to part-time students. It's worth 10 credits and you produce an original body of work, um, should be new and novel, um, and the format would be uh, similar to what you would expect in a paper publication. So you follow those guidelines and it's about 5,000 word document that we expect from students at the end. In relation to the thesis then, um, that's significantly higher credits, so it's 30 credits. So you want to produce an original body of work, it needs to be new and novel. Um, uh, have about three chapters. Uh, you need to have a collaborating supervisor on that. Um, and um, again, we support students in that we review their um, different stages of their writing. As you can see here, we use that for students. So at different stages, we ask them to submit parts of their writing and they, we provide um, external feedback to that what they would get from their supervisor. Um, a little bit about the fellowship program. This is currently on hold due to the pandemic and uh, we at the moment can't foresee that it will go on um, this year either. So it's the second year that we have had to put it on hold. It's um, an experience that's uh, usually for students on the program um, get the opportunity to work with us in the clinical research facility. Um, unfortunately, um, because we're all working um, from home at the moment, um, the opportunity to do a fellowship with us at the moment is not there. So again, any updates will be posted on the website, but um, it does not look like um, it will go ahead this year either. Um, I said a bit about career opportunities uh, before that. So um, the slide just kind of gives it a, again, you can streamline your masters to suit you to take a path, whether it's becoming the next investigator on a clinical trial or whether you want to be move from nursing into research nursing or you wish to become a clinical research associate or a regulatory affairs manager for example so the you, you tend to choose your modules to suit that career path that you want to take as well um 
we've been asked to, uh, to kind of highlight the Taught Master's Scholarship Scheme that's uh, open as well, and information on that is available to you on the NUIG website. Um, and then that's uh, something uh, just to be familiar that you need to check online in relation to what teaching will be like um, for September 2021. Uh, what are the changes? Uh, again, that might change by the time you um, select a master's program or be, are offered one. But again, just to be aware that um, things are at the moment a little bit up in the air. So just um, that's kind of it. Um, so that's me done uh, in terms of um, talking about the master's program. Uh, I will stop recording now and uh, be open for some questions.